Hi, this is Shanti bringing you another episode of Shanti Fine Arts. Today we are going to do a very simple figurative watercolor tutorial and uh, uh, this is based on the Indian festival of Holi. Holi is a festival that is celebrated in India um, and it's a f festival of colors uh, that marks the beginning of spring. All the materials are linked as usual in the video description below. So to start off, I am wetting all the background around the figure uh, generously with water so that when I put in the colors, it automatically blends in all the colors uh, flow out and blend into each other. Like you can see, I'm starting off with very um, dull tones of browns and then I'll add some blues, purples and various different colors. Like I said, this um, painting is kind of symbol of the festival of colors. So I'm going to use a lot of different colors all over this painting, starting with the background. But for the background, initially, I'll begin with a very light base of colors. So initially, just put on some colors here and there. And it's when it dries, as you know, watercolor dries a lot uh, lighter than what you what it goes on wet. So it's going to be a lot lighter in the very beginning when I or, uh, put the first round of colors. But then I'll darken some of the areas um, depending on or what is around it. So my target here is to hype up the contrast um, in the entire painting. So some of the areas will be really, really dark and some will be a little bit less dark. So that's the general idea. And as you can see, I'm still working on the areas around the figure and putting in lots and lots of colors. And uh, the paint, uh, the paper right now is completely wet and working wet on wet like this allows me to get a very nice blend the colors are mixing on with each other due to gravity uh, all by itself and because it is wet it's it's kind of flowing into each other and uh, look leaving very nice color blooms here and there and that is what my intent is now in some of the areas which are partially dry, I'm adding some more colors to brighten up those areas. And you don't want to do it in each and every area. You want to do it in certain areas. Now I'm starting off with the face. Unfortunately, my video camera did not uh, record a little bit in the very beginning of the face painting. But what I did is I uh, wet, wetted the entire area of the face apart from the in inner part of the eyes and inside of the mouth where the smile would be and put a very light base layer created uh, by like a skin tone layer and I mix my skin tones by mixing in different uh, mixing in red white with a tiny bit of blue and uh, red and a little bit of yellow and this is the base of the skin tone and then I darken and lighten it by applying more of red and blue and different colors. Now in this particular uh, painting the reference photo that I'm going by I'm not following one reference photo directly but the reference photo that I'm generally following has a lot of shadows in the face and around the face and all those shadows in show more of a purple tone and very brown some some of the brown red tones and some purple tones so you can see that i'm adding a lot of purples in the darker areas key to this uh getting a nice face or portrait area of our skin tone with watercolor is to try and work as much as possible wet on wet so that the paint itself blends into other colors and leaves a very smooth and even tone. Uh, in the lips, I'm adding a little bit more of crimson and red. Um, initially, when I put in the nose first, I found out later that the nose was a little too small and flat. So I just wetted the surface again and uh, erased that dark marks out and I'll put in the nose a little bit later. Now you can see that I am adding reds and purples in the neck area. And after I put in quite a bit of color, I'm blending out the edges and making them much softer. I do want some harsh shadows here and there though. I don't want all of them to blend out but at this point i'll blend out most of it i'm adding some shadows underneath the 
nose note that i am not using any black till now if i have to use blacks which i try to avoid as much as possible in any painting because black is a very dulling color even if i use black i mix it with other colors so at this point i'm not using any black and whenever i use black it will be at the very end and as little as possible and i'll also add a little bit of other colors with it now i wetted the area of the hair and it might sound a little surprising but i'm first putting in prussian blue in the hair now that it, uh, this girl has blue hair this girl actually has black hair and uh, very dark brown black hair and to do that and to get a nice black i'm first adding in a lot of prussian blue and i'm adding another layer of prussian blue here i'm using much more amount of pigments and less of water and then i'll also come back with another layer where i'll have more of black and very little prussian blue and then i'll almost take out all the areas that look white or very light blue right now with blue and that is how i get very nice dark color for the hair so layering is what i am targeting here i have often seen that in case of watercolor like every other medium that i work with um, if you work in layers it gives you much brighter darker colors and better results in the very end i did a little bit of the earrings i'm not paying a whole lot of attention to that now i'm starting on the outfit first the little blouse on top and it has a lot of uh, shiny golden silver golden border so those areas i'm putting in a little bit of purple first to denote the silvery look and then i'm putting in some blues in the shadow areas first and now i'm using my crimson color and you can see it's a very bold dark crimson so i'm using very little water and a lot of pigments to get that bold color and in the shadow areas i'm adding purples this combination and purple and red is looked ultimately looked very nice and bright the first layer of red i used crimson and then i also added a little bit of uh, scarlet red at the very end that made the red look very bright now i'm coming on to the wheel portion of her dress in the front and in this particular painting i decided to do the clothing and the outfit area by area that ways i had much more control over smaller areas and i could get very nice dark colors very bright colors now this wheel is going to be blue but you can see that i'm first putting in a lot of crimson this is because the underlying um layer of outfit the blouse is red so some of it will show through from the blue and the blue that i saw in the reference photo had kind of shades of red it's kind of a, like a two-tone blue and that's why i put the crimson in first now i'm doing the hand and i'm adding the first layer of um, color and first i'm putting in some browns and crimsons and then i'll follow it up with some darker purples i spent a lot of time uh, perfecting the hand and the shad shadows of the hand but in the end it it like when i when you come to the end of the painting you will see that it was not much of use i could have left this um area not so much prominent because uh, i covered it up most of it with colors of cloud but uh, I'll explain that later at the end. At this point, it probably will not make much of sense. So the, this girl was wearing a lot of bangles in one hand, a lot of blue bangles. So I wanted to do that and I left a little bit area white in the hand because of that. And then I'm working on the hand. Although I'm, I'm going to cover this up, but this is a good, nice way to learn how to paint hands uh, too. I started with the base color and then i'm darkening up the shadow areas now i'm putting in the bangles i'm first putting a layer of cerulean blue and then i'll add 
some cobalt and prussian blue for the shadows and darker areas that gives it a very three-dimensional rounded look and you will see that i have made my brush strokes in a rounded fashion to show that the bangles are actually round this is how you get more of a realistic 3d look on to the other hand, I'm doing exactly the same thing. First, putting in the reds and browns uh, while the base skin tone is still wet so that it blends very nicely. And then I'll come back with some purples to darken some of the shadow areas. At the very end of the fingers, I'm adding a little bit of colors because a lot of dancers in India and in festival times, women in general put a lot of um, mehendi or um, red color in their hands at the very edges it's that's kind of like a, a festivity um, out kind of thing symbol in India and I used it I did that once or twice once in my marriage and one other time too it's very much fun anyways back onto the painting i am doing more of the borders of the wheel area and like i said it's kind of has a silver golden tone so i'm first putting in a very light base tone of yellow and then i'm coming back with a blue gray mix to show the shadows and highlights i worked very carefully little by little in this area so that i do not have too much of paint or uh, pigment in any area and then I'm also adding browns in some areas because of how it has folded and how light has reflected from each of the areas just the ribbon itself shows a lot of different colors and it also has a very thin red border so I'll also put that before I start on to any other area and uh, like I see I'm working very slowly in certain areas now onto the skirt part i the main color that i used in the skirt is cerulean blue but all the shadows are made by cobalt and prussian blues and it doesn't have to be any particular blue i just chose this one for this particular painting no specific reason for that matter and i worked again in very small sections in the skirt area also so that i could work wet on wet and automatically when i drop the colors on top of an already existing color it automatically blends out a little bit but still does not uh, completely blend out which gives a very nice look that i am going for it kind of gives a shadow light dark all uh, demarcate uh, um, all showing at the same time and it also gives the feeling of movement that I'm going for because this girl is dancing and the skirt is whirling around her that uh, that movement the feel of movement is very nicely captured if you work wet on wet now on to the front part of the wheel like I said I want this is a very dark blue color so I first wetted the entire area with a lot of water then I am adding the first layer of cobalt blue and at this point it does not look like a lot of pigment it looks a like very light blue actually but I'll come back with multiple more layers and darken the blues quite a bit and I'm using a mix of cobalt and Prussian blue and the darker the uh, areas I want to be the further I go on the layers the more of paint I'm using and less of water that is the way to build on layers and get very dark colors note that I am leaving out some little areas of the very light color as well which gives very nice highlight kind of looks now moving on to the other part of the wheel that kind of is hanging from her body also to give this area a movement I'm using again the wet on wet technique putting on wet first and then while it is still wet I'm adding more colors to show the shadows so that it partially mixes out in the wet background but some of it still stays bright and light finishing off note that around the hand especially I'm using particularly very dark pigments so that the hands pop out this is what I mean when I talk about 
enhancing your contrast so wherever there is light color beside that if you can put very dark color it will look really nice it will enhance the contrast and make your entire uh, painting look very bright and we can see that i'm leaving some line like areas because i want to show some thread work or some texture in the um, outfit as well back onto the skirt doing the same wet on wet met method putting a first layer of light cerulean blue and then coming back with a lot of pigments of cobalt and prussian blue note that i am all apart from the longitudinal strokes for the shadows i'm also using some horizontal strokes which are partially getting blended in the wet background but partially still staying and that kind of gives the look of the texture that i was just talking about a couple of minutes ago I'll finish off the entire skirt in the same manner, putting in more cerulean blue first and then darker blues while the uh, painting is still wet, while the skirt area is still wet. And this is what I talked about many times in this painting that I chose little sections at a time and worked wet on wet on those areas. And it really worked out very well and um, help me blend very easily and get the darks and lights very nicely and give me the complete movement look of movement that I was going for and at the same time I do not have to worry about some of the areas get getting dry while I'm working some of the areas so just section out your painting into areas while working with watercolors and that probably will make it much easier I would say that the same theory would work with acrylics as well anything that has water in it and dries fast if you work in smaller sections that would probably make it much easier if you're trying to work very realistically so adding some shadows underneath the skirt finishing the last little portion of the skirt with the cerulean blue and uh, Prussian cobalt blues just like I did in the other areas I know a lot of times I'm reiterating the same thing over and over in this painting but that is the key feature of this painting that is why I'm reiterating and uh, this particular festival although I never really played a lot with colors I love this festival how people played with colors and by the end of the day when people uh, finish uh, playing colors their faces are not even recognizable because there is so much color on the faces there's like powder color there is also liquid colors and there is like like clouds of colors in the air at certain times this is very beautiful even if you are not playing and just watching it's still beautiful to watch now you can see that i am making some uh, marks like clouds or smoke around the girl and i'm using my watercolor pencils here next what i'm going to do is wherever i put those marks i'm wetting those areas specifically and first i put a layer of color with blues purples a little bit of reds crimsons here and there and then i'm coming back with my gouache and adding a little bit of gouache because i want this area to be a little bit opaque and this is what I was talking about in the beginning when I was painting the hands that you can see that I kind of completely covered the hand with the amount uh, with the amount of paint I put for the paint clouds. So if I didn't have if I didn't have put so much of effort in painting the hands, it would have been perfectly fine because I anyways covered it up. But it everything was is not exactly planned at the beginning of the painting. So that's what happened. So I'm finishing off the clouds now. I want this part to be very opaque. It's adding a lot more color. This is pretty much it for the painting, although I have to do the same color clouds on the other side as well. But I hope you learned a few new trip tips and techniques in this painting. If you like this painting, do give me an all important thumbs up. It makes me feel very good. Share your thoughts in the comments. I love to know what you think about this painting and the techniques. And if you want to know anything more or learn anything, then definitely let me know. I'll try my best to put my uh, answer all your questions and uh, do all the tutorials in future to respond to your requirements. That's the goal of my channel. 
so that's pretty much it, it for the, this painting i hope you love this painting and uh, do not forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you get notified every time i post new videos which is typically wednesdays and fridays of every week thank you very much for watching and do not forget to share your comments if you have any questions please let me know and happy holy to everyone i hope you have a very colorful very bright holy and a very good spring season as well thank you once again